Okay, in this video, you guys will learn about start topic 11.3, which is about introduction to particle physics. Okay, this is the last sub topic for this semester. Okay, so previously, eh, kita selalu cakap yang apa yang kita belajar ni actually adalah modern physics. Okay, to distinguish between classical physics yang cerita pasal Newtonian mechanics ataupun Maxwell electromagnetism. Okay, so tapi uh, bila kita dah sekarang ni kan modern tu macam not that appropriate lah sebab apa kalau kamu perasan lah those modern physics tu actually starts from 1905 okay 1905 ni bila Einstein publish his paper on the photoelectric effect dengan dia punya first paper on special relativity okay and then in 1913 Bohr publish his quantum model of the hydrogen atom and then in 1926 Schrodinger publish his matter wave equation So, this one is, I mean, like, this is, like, uh, how many years old? 90 years old ago. Okay, 90 years ago. Dah lama, eh. But then we still call this one as a modern physics starting from here. Okay. And then up until 1930s, scientists still agree that atomic atom is made only of three particles, which is electron, proton, and then neutron. Okay. But then, since they nak, kita ni, kita sendiri nak kaji what is the universe made of, kan? Universe ni dia pun buat daripada apa And then macam mana universe ni terbentuk So Dia terjumpa lagi beberapa partikel So by the end of 1930s Actually dia jumpa lots of particle Those particle such as uh, Mion, Kion, Kaon and Sigma Okay they use like Greek letter you know? And then eventually these Greek letters pun Dia dah runs out of the Greek letter Nak represent Okay And these particle lah yang dia jumpa ni Actually very very Unstable So basically dia boleh nampak sekelip Nak kata sekelip mata pun tak nampak lah Because dia punya half life You can imagine is 10 to the power of negative 6 And 10 to the power of negative 23 Which is very very small numbers eh? So sangat sekejap okay? So those particles yang discovered ni okay, Produce in head on collision Between proton or electrons And is accelerated to high energies In accelerators So today is dah banyak sangat known uh, particles and then they categorize by simple physical criteria nanti kita cerita lah and this uh, model yang dia categorize ni kita panggil sebagai standard model okay, that we use maybe standard model ni is a bit gen tak ada generic eh but then ni yang kita pakai lah untuk kita kategorikan all the uh, known particles okay, so at the end of this chapter di satu topik lah, student should be able to state the thermionic emission so first kali kita akan belajar pasal thermionic emission so. and then you guys will uh, learn about acceleration of particle and then accelerator needs for high energy and then last is about standard quark electron model particles okay? and then anti-particle as well okay, first of all about thermionic emission The thermionic emission is defined as the emission into the vacuum from the heated conductor. Okay, so basically this is the example here. This conductor is being heated. So bila dia being heated, the supply energy lah, kinetic energy dia increase. Ah, uh, vibrational kinetic energy increase. So eventually vibrational kinetic energy tu dia overcome energy yang ah uh, pegang dia lah. So electron will release. Itu secara bahasa mudahnya lah So Bila dia heat up Ni contoh eh Bila dia heat up Akan ada electron emission So dia produce uh, Electron emission daripada hot filament So to increase rate of emission You can increase the temperature And then use low ionization metal So lagi senang dia nak jadi ionized Jadi electrons lah Okay so Thermonic emission ni antara basis eh, Untuk kita punya eksperimen Yang seterusnya Okay, particle accelerator means that a machine for increasing the kinetic energies of a charged particle. There are eight categories of particle accelerators. Ada lapan benda lah. We have, uh, ni banyak lah kamu boleh baca eh. But for, your, for you guys, kita akan fokus dekat dua ni. Eh. In your syllabus, we focus on linear accelerator and circular accelerator. Linear accelerator also known as linear and circular accelerator known as of cyclotron. Okay. So, how does the linear accelerator work? Okay, this is an example of linear accelerator. Eh? Okay, this one in, uh, from the Stanford Uni. 
panjang dia tu dekat 3 km okay, and then they manage to accelerate electrons almost to the speed of light almost eh almost ok so linear accelerator ni consists of tubes ok ada banyak tubes ok yang penting tubes ni they connected to a alternate terminal of alternating current so kamu boleh nampak lah initially katakan ni positif ni negatif positif negatif positif so dia alternate punya connections ok and then inside here kita treat contohnya ini sebagai positively charged ion ataupun positively charged particle lah so positif ni dia akan tolak uh, particle ni ke sana ok tapi sebab ni alternate and this one is uh, alternating current so benda tu berubah so dia jadi bila dia masuk ke sini velocity dia constant but then sini jadi positif sini jadi negatif so dia bergerak ke sana pula ok again dekat sini dia akan accelerate dekat gap tu but then dekat dalam ni tube ni balik dia gerak in constant velocity so those process are repeated ok contoh dia kalau dalam pergerakan macam ni lah so you can see over here uh, dekat C1 tu kan bila dia lalu dia positif so dia tolak uh, particles tu and dia masuk kat situ dan dia tolak lagi tolak lagi and tolak and benda tu repeated ok then they use alternating current lah so as a result you have a very high velocity particle ok our next uh, accelerator is called circular accelerator ok circular accelerator ni cara berfungsi dia different sedikit lah by sini kamu boleh agak lah dia circular and then they consist of two uh, hemisphere ni dipanggil sebagai D's ok this is basically just a hollow hemisphere lah ok and then dia ada uniform uh, mag biasanya uniform magnetic field across dia perpendicular lah dengan this tu ni ada tulis ok uniform magnetic field in this direction dia perpendicular ok kamu tahulah kalau partikel lalu dekat uh, perpendicular magnetic field dia akan motion dia tu macam circular motion ok so ini dia punya iron source dia ni starting position lah so dia release and then dia masuk dekat sini magnetic field uniform magnetic field so dia akan jadi circular punya motion and then this one sebenarnya dia ada potential difference eh? potential difference ni because there's potential difference bila dekat gap ni dia akan increase the velocity ok so bila dia increase velocity and then dia pergi balik dekat D tu dia still akan bentuk uh, circular motion but now the punya velocity is higher so you will expect the punya radius pun higher so dia makin besar lah dia punya circular tu and then again dekat gap ni dia increase lagi sebab potential different ok lepas tu dekat sini the constant velocity dekat gap tu increase lagi so this process repeated that's why dia jadi macam putaran ni tapi putaran dia tu macam spiral yang keluar kan and then eventually dia akan keluar and then dia akan pergi ke beam and then terus ni ke target ok ni contohnya lah ok this one is quite big punya uh, cyclotron ok ini adalah dua konsep yang kamu tahu lah the difference between uh, linear acceleration dengan sorry linear accelerator dengan circular accelerator so why do you need the high energy high energy are required to investigate the structure of neutrons due to their small size ok neutron ni sangat kecil sebab so, tu dulu kita ingat dalam neutron ni ada potongan neutron saja kan and this because higher energy of matter such as electron the smaller the de Broglie wavelength ok this one from previous chapter chapter where the smaller the de Broglie wavelength they are more suitable for investigating the smaller object as resolution increase so you know that lambda is inversely proportional to the resolution so she can make the lambda small enough ok basically you can increase the resolution ok the next part is about standard model so macam saya cakap tadi lah uh, by now ada banyak sangat particles yang dijumpai so roughly dia bahagikan kepada tiga kategori ok so it's either fermion atau boson hydrogen or lactone ataupun particles or antiparticles so basically can categorize into these three things ok and fermion or boson ni actually dia cerita pasal angular momentum ok and angular momentum which is spin lah so this part is actually outside of your syllabus so kita tak discuss yang fermion or boson so we're gonna skip that part and then we're gonna focus on hadron or lactone
Okay, so uh, for hadron or lectern, basically is classified in terms of four fundamental forces. Okay, uh, the four fundamental forces are gravitational force. Okay, this is weak, and because we are talking about subatomic level, like very very small mass, we can basically ignore this force. Okay, and then we have another fundamental force, electromagnetic. Okay, this one is well known effect, so it's like uh, the effects you can see clearly uh, on the particles. So again, we choose to ignore unless we want to see it in terms of uh, electromagnetic force. Uh. And then we have strong force. This one is the one that binds the nucleons. Okay, This one actually acts only on some particle. On the other hand, we have weak force. Okay, Example, weak force here is like beta decays. The phenomena that beta decays. And then this one occurs on all particle. So the strong and the weak force here we separate into hadron and leptons. Okay. Hadron here we categorize with the strong force, while leptons with the weak force. Okay, so because only weak force acts, so the main the main force that acts only is basically electromagnetic. Huh? Example here for hadron is proton, neutrons, and pions, and leptons we have electrons and neutrinos. Okay. And then hadron plug you can divide into two parts. Okay, so actually these two parts they divide by best uh, boson dengan fermions tadi tu. Eh? Kalau kamu tengok kat atas tadi, yang kita tak belajar ni kan fermion dengan boson ni, actually itu yang determinkan whether the mesons ataupun baryon. Okay, tapi sebab kita tak discuss between boson dengan fermions ni, kita akan tengok daripada aspek lain. Okay, so contoh meson ada yang pion, uh, baryon, contoh dia adalah proton. Okay, because we are not talking about the spin and all, so here, meson ni, kita kategorikan dia sebagai masses that are less than the proton mass. So, kalau dia kecil daripada proton mass, kita panggil dia mesons. Okay, dia adalah hadron eh. Kalau dia kurang daripada proton punya mass, we call that one as meson. Okay. So, the mass normally lies between the mass of electron dengan the mass of proton. So, Elektron ni lagi kecil lah mass dia Okay, example here For meson particles Pions And then ada yang ni uh, I don't know how to pronounce this one And this one, okay And then ada symbol, respecting symbol Okay, and then for Bryans is basically hadron that have mass equal to Or greater than the proton mass So basically we separate Uh, mesons and baryon eh, based on their mass okay, kalau dia berat dia lagi besar daripada proton uh, we call that one as baryon kalau dia less we call that one as meson okay. so in Greek words here baryon means heavy lah okay, this one is examples of baryon particle proton, neutron, lambda, sigma dengan omega Okay, and then if you guys remember tadi, we have three, two parts, right? Hadrons and lepton, kan? Kalau hadrons tu, dia boleh jadi mesons or baryon, the base on the punya mass. And then now, kita nak cerita pasal leptons tu. Okay, leptons tu is any of class elementary particle that consists of electron, neon, tau particle, and three types of neutrino. Okay, jadi small. That is to be truly point like fundamental particles. So, fundamental particles ataupun elementary particles ni, yang dia tak ada lagi kecil. Uh, this is the smallest part okay? And then This is Dia tak ada uh, Kecil lagi lah This is the Paling kecil hmm. Dia punya contoh Adalah elektron Neon Dengan tau And each one of these Dia ada Dia punya neutrino Dia sendiri, sendiri. Okay? okay What I mean Yang fundamental tadi Kata uh, Hadron Unlike leptons Are not fundamental particles Okay But inside hadron tu, the consists of small constituent particles known as quark. Okay. Ini kecuali proton dengan neutron. So, kalau kamu tengok tadi ya, eh, baryon ni contohnya, lambda, sigma, omega ni actually consists of quark. Lagi kecil daripada this one. Okay. But proton dengan neutron tak ada. Eh. Okay. And then hadron ni, they have a very short half-life. Sebab dia uh, tak stable lah. Dia punya region tu between 10 to the power of negative 18 to 10 to the power of negative 
So yang stable hanyalah proton dengan neutron saja. Okay, so what is actually quark? Okay, quark model ni, sebenarnya uh, George ni, dia point out sebab ada pattern which is uh, eight four way patterns. Okay, itu kamu tak belajar lah. Eh? So, saya sikit dapat. So, that pattern can only be explained or understood if Manson and Bryons ni terdiri daripada subunits. Okay, yang di call sebagai quarks. So, maksudnya sebab dia nak explain certain thing, so logically quarks ni wujud lah. And then quarks ni initially dia dikategorikan sebagai up, down dengan strange. Okay. And then uh, those name actually tak ada maksud spesifik lah. They just a label. Okay. Macam you can basically names dia benda lain macam uh, apa ni? Uh, vanilla ke, chocolate ke, strawberry ke, dia tak kisah. Eh? So these names ni yang up, down, strange, charm ni basically it is called as quark flavors. Okay, in normal situation eh, dalam normal situation quarks ni dia bounce up together in two or three ataupun more lah the reasons still tak dikena pasti tapi dia tak wujud sendiri ok ok so ini adalah list lagi so yang ni uh, dia punya list of quarks ok dan ini list of anti quarks dia dia ada entire up, entire down, entire strange Ini semua terbalik lah Yang terbalik entire semua dia tak bar And based on this uh, Listed by uh, Ni, model ni Quark model ni So, didapati Mansons ni, dia adalah Quark anti quark pairs Manakala, Brian pula adalah Consists of three quark okay, Itu yang penting lah So, cakap tadi kalau kamu ingat yang ni saya copy je balik okay. So, hadron tu dia terbaik kepada Mason dengan Brian kan Nah, Mason ni dia consist of quark dengan anti-quark Contohnya, U, D uh, Anti-quark dia adalah down, anti-down okay. Contohnya eh. And then, uh, kalau Brian dia consist of 3 quark okay. Contoh Brian tu macam ni The Proton ni dia consist of U, U, D Up, up, down okay. Neutron ni dia consist of U, D, D Okay. Dia ada syarat dia I mean, uh, Macam contoh dia kan Proton ni dia, Charge dia tu nak kena Dapat positif satu Dari kiraan dia And then kamu ada Spin dia punya conservation uh, And then kamu ada Quantum punya Quantum number punya conservation Conservation okay. Yang tu semua kita tak belajar lah So I'm not going focus on that Things Okay so kalau kita tengok balik Kita punya standard model yang asal tu kan? So we already discuss uh, Hadron and Lepton's eh? Affirmian and Boson tu kita tak discuss because it is out of the syllabus and now we want to discuss about particle or antiparticle down here the last part ok actually in 1928 eh, uh, Paul Dirac they predict that electron ni dia kena ada positively charged counterpart okay. mass dia sama spin dia sama this counterpart which is positron 1928 is wrong here hmm, kamu bayangkan Okay, this counterpart and then dapat discovered okay, yang positron ni discovered in cosmic radiation in 1932 so over here dia discovered lah positron dekat sini dia predict dekat situ dia cover discover <coughs> ok after that physicists then gradu gradually realize that every particle must have corresponding antiparticle ok the members such as pair syarat dia kan same mass and spin but opposite sign of electric charge this one lah same mass opposite charge ok and then quantum number pun actually akan opposite tapi kat sini kita tak discuss lah about quantum numbers nanti the knots ni sepatutnya uh, betul lah sorry spin ni sepatutnya same tapi yang charge tu yang opposite Ok, at first particle was used to refer to common particles Macam electron, protons and neutron Anti particles tu refer to rarely detected counterparts Dan jarang jumpa tu lah And then eventually Benda ni macam dikekalkan lah Ok, and then biasanya Untuk bezakan particle dengan anti particle tu Biasanya, tak semestinya Kita letak dia punya bar Macam kat sini kan 
anti up dia ada bar sorry kat sini anti up dia ada bar anti down dia ada bar kat atas tu nampak sangat eh dan yang V tu anti electron ada bar and then the one of the main uh, properties here eh the, the particles ni kalau dia meet anti particle like yang kiri ni jumpa yang kanan dia punya anti particle this two can annihilate and dia terhapus lah ok that is the particle and particle disappear and their combination and this reappears in other form ok for electron with positron this energy reappears as two gamma ray so kalau dia bertemu dia terhapus and then dia jadikan gamma ray jadikan gamma ray ok and then actually uh, kalau nak ikutkan uh, direct ni direct ni sebenarnya dia predict yang akan ada uh, antimatter juga ok tapi anti now antimatter tu tak dapat dibuktikan lagi lah ok and these are the list of particles and their anti particles so you guys need to know lah apa opposite untuk elektron positron apa opposite untuk muon anti muon and then tau apa opposite dia anti tau ok Okay, and then lastly, I just want to show this one. Okay. Uh, boson ni, this one kan, kalau kamu ingat lagi, boson tu sebenarnya kategori dia bawah sini lah. Okay, boson tu kita tak cerita. So, tak adalah. And this part kita tak cerita pun. Okay. You just want this class, I just want to show this one. Okay. Leptons ni sebenarnya dia diconsider sebagai elementary particles. Means that dia tak ada lagi kecil. This is the smallest particle. Dia punya, dia tak ada. Dalam dia tak ada benda lagi lah. So, we call this one as elementary particles. Kalau macam tadi tu, hadron ataupun lockdown, ataupun kalau saya pergi atas sedikit, ini tadi, okay, this one kan. Kalau hadron, dia consist of meson and brion, okay, dalam ni dia sebenarnya consist of quarks. Okay, kalau kita pergi balik ni, okay, quark ni lah, dia punya elementary particles.